One, two, three, four. I'm Steve Carafit, and this is the Sunday Stoic Podcast. Please join me as we use the ancient philosophy of Stoicism to live more fulfilled, calm, and meaningful lives. Wisdom. Prudentia. Justice. Justicia. Temperance. Temperantia. Courage. Fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Welcome back. Thanks for rejoining me after my break. I had a few weeks off and I really appreciate the time to recharge. This is the second season of the Sunday Stoic. I haven't really done seasons, but hey, we took a break, so we'll call this season two. We're approaching the two-year anniversary of the podcast. That'll be in April. And I really appreciate everyone who's been listening. I really appreciate my patrons and my listeners that have written in. I hear from people all around the world, and it's great to be with you again. For those of you joining for the first time, you may wonder, what the heck is this podcast about? This is a podcast released typically on Sundays that explores the ancient philosophy of Stoicism. So we talk about the ancient Stoics and modern Stoics, the applications of this philosophy to modern life, and why in the world would we be interested in something weird like a philosophy? Well, Stoicism is a practical philosophy, meaning it's something you can actually take action on. It's not just about thinking about how the universe works and things like that. It's about actually living well and trying to become the best human being that we can. It's a process of self-improvement. And it's not entirely self-focused, however. Um, a big part of Stoicism is being an active member of the society in which you live, the world at large, the cosmopolis, being part of the world around you. I have found this philosophy to be very actionable, and very relevant to my life, and I've seen improvement since I've begun practicing it. So my plan for the next several months is to start with Zeno, the founder of Stoicism, and work our way up to the Roman Stoics. We're going to spend more time with the Roman Stoics than with the early Stoics, simply because we don't have a lot of their writings. They've been lost to time. But I thought it would be a good idea, not just an academic pursuit, but to, to learn about the ethics of these early Stoics, to see how a, a Stoicism evolved so we can better learn to understand how to apply this in modern life, to, to get over this dogmatic idea that there's only one way to be a Stoic, and to see how it's changed and how we might adapt it to our modern lives. So let's get started by looking into the life and times of Zeno of Citium. So this all starts with Socrates. I recommend, if you have not already read any of Plato's or Xenophon's works describing Socrates, that you check those out. Do yourself a favor. One of the followers of Socrates was Anisthenes, and I'm going to mispronounce the heck out of some Greek and Roman names here. I'm sorry. It's, I'm a biologist, and I'm doing the best I can. But Anisthenes was a follower of Socrates, and he eventually founded his own school that we now call Cynicism. He focused not on logic and things like that, but on living a, a virtuous life. So he took parts of what Socrates said and focused on those things, just living a good life uh, free from material possessions and things like that. One of Anisthenes' pupils was Diogenes, and Diogenes the Cynic is the most famous of the Cynics. You can read about him also in the lives of the eminent philosophers. Um, he, for example, uh, when seeing a young boy drinking from a, a well using his hands as a cup, Diogenes felt ashamed 
that he had been lugging this cup around all these years, and he pulled it out of his satchel and smashed it, and from then on drank water only using his hands for a cup. So he shunned excess material possessions. It is said that when Alexander the Great asked Diogenes if there was anything he could do to help him out, Diogenes replied, you can step to the side, you're in the sun. You're blocking the sun. So a pretty hardcore guy. Um, cynicism is one of those philosophies that involved um, walking around on the street and basically berating people for not living virtuously. One of Diogenes' students was Crates, or Crates. I guess we'll call him Crates for the remainder of the podcast. Uh, it looks like Crates if you're a country boy like me. Now, Crates was a student of Diogenes, and he was known as uh, someone who would just walk into people's homes and berate them for, for uh, not living virtuously. Something you wouldn't get away with these days. You walk into a house in Arkansas and say, What's up with your cable television? Why are you watching football? Do you really need all these possessions? You'd end up shot. Um, but <laughs> Crates, or Crates was known for doing that. Um, the cynics would do things that were considered shameless in the day. They would dress uh, very shabbily. They might expose themselves in public when they go to the restroom or whatever. They, they might even touch themselves in public. <laughs> you know, things that seemed really strange to the masses. But they were doing that to shock the masses, to make them think about the things that they value and the way they approach life. Now, our hero, Zeno, comes into the picture now. Zeno, um, according to some reports, was... Um, transporting a large shipment of purple dye, which is a very expensive dye made from the the guts and blood of shellfish. Very hard to get a hold of back in the ancient world. And his ship wrecked, and he lost his fortune. And then he is now in Athens and stuck in a bookshop, you know, listening to jazz and drinking Starbucks coffee, no doubt. And he's reading... The Memorabilia by Xenophon, which is a work on uh, Socrates. And he's really enjoying this work, and he knows his fortune is lost, and he says to the bookshop owner, where can I find a man like this Socrates? And it just so happens that uh, Crates was walking by outside, and the bookshop owner says, follow that man. So Zeno joins up with uh, Crates, and he or Crates, <laughs> and he studies with him for something like 10 or 20 years. Zeno apparently really took to the philosophy of cynicism, but he was not as shameless as your typical cynic, something that uh, uh, Crates worked on, trying to get trying to get Zeno to be more shameless, <laughs> being willing to uh, look foolish in public, etc. Now, at this time, he's studying with Crates, he starts flirting with other philosophies as well. And one of the lectures he attends is that of Stilpo. And you might remember Stilpo or Stilbo. We, re we talked about him uh, when we discussed some of the writings of Seneca in the past. Uh, Stilbo is said to have had his whole city, even his home and his family, destroyed uh, by an invading force. And when the invading force general uh saw stilbo he says you know how are you doing bud and stilbo says i have lost nothing which sounds really harsh but but stilpo um is running under the assumption that virtue is the best supreme good everything else is temporary in the world and stilpo has lost nothing that he didn't expect to be lost you can lose a home family members can die he still had his integrity and he could continue on. So so uh, Zeno is, is studying under Stilpo. Eventually he leaves uh, Crates and he studies with other individuals. Um, and at some point, Zeno makes his way to the Oracle of Delphi or Delphi um, and asks the Oracle, How should I live my life? And the oracle responds, Take on the complexion of the dead. Now, he took this to mean he should be a student of ancient authors. 
So he studies with other philosophers for something like 20 years. So don't feel bad if you feel like you've been studying Stoicism for six months or two years and you haven't made tremendous progress. Zeno is studying with all of these philosophers for quite a long time. Now, eventually, he starts to teach, and he teaches in this colonnade, this porch called the Stoa. Uh, it's called the Painted Porch because it had a big uh, uh, portrait, a big, uh, what I want to say, mural painted on it. And he's walking up and down, kind of actively preaching uh, uh, philosophy. And those who really started to listen and follow him were known as Zeonians. But eventually they became became known as Stoics because of the Stoa, the porch where Zeno taught. Now, I'm going to just read through some of the interesting points I, I came across when reading uh, the lives of the eminent philosophers. I encourage you to read through it yourself because I'm not going to read everything that's in there. It's kind of a hodgepodge and some things are more useful than others and some things I might have skipped or missed but I'm just going to give you an idea of this individual, of Zeno, and also point out some of the quotes that I really liked from, from Zeno. He would carry money in a secret compartment in his water flask so he could help keep his old teacher, uh, Crates, alive, help keep him fed. He would eat bread and honey, and he liked to drink a little bit of wine. Once, when a young man was talking a great deal, Zeno said to the young lad, Your ears have slid down and merged with your tongue. It is also said that Zeno said, The reason why we have two ears and only one mouth is that we may listen the more and talk less. Now, Zeno was a believer in the fact that our fates were firmly set in place, so it is said one time when he was beating a slave for stealing, the slave said, it was my fate to steal. And Zeno replied, yes, and it is your fate to be beaten as well. So kind of a harsh dude, right? Uh, <laughs> we may not want to model ourselves exactly after Zeno, but it, but someone to, to think about. Now, one of the quotes that I really like from Zeno here is, it says, quote, Apollonius of Tyre tells us how when Crates laid hold of him by the cloak to drag him from Stilpo. Zeno said, The right way to seize a philosopher, Crates, is by the ears. Persuade me then and drag me off by them. But if you use violence, my body will be with you, but my mind with Stilpo. So you can't drag someone away from something that they find interesting or they find reasonable. You have to convince them with their mind, with argument not with violence. When he was asked at a party, even though he lived this cynic lifestyle, why he was relaxing and drinking, he said, Lupins too are bitter, but when they are soaked, they become sweet. So he's saying, yeah, I'm kind of a jerk. I'm kind of a bitter guy. But when I soak myself in a little wine, I become much sweeter. Hakato, too, in the second book of his anecdotes, says that when he indulged freely at such parties, when he's drinking wine, he would say, It's better to trip with the feet than with the tongue. So it's better to get a little drunk and stumble around than to uh, trip up with your tongue and say things that you shouldn't have. Although, I will warn you, if you drink too much, you may well trip with your tongue as well. There was even poetry devoted to Zeno. It was said of him, The cold of winter and the ceaseless rain Come powerless against him, weak the dart Of the fierce summer sun or racking pain To bend that iron frame he stands apart Unspoiled by public feast and jollity Patient, unwearied, night and day doth he Cling to his studies of philosophy. So Zeno was head of the Stoa for quite a while, at least for a little while, and he had several students. We'll talk about some of them next time. And eventually he dies. It is said he broke his toe and fell to the ground and suffocated himself. I don't know if that's exactly how it all went down, but that's what the ancient story says here. But it should be noted, though he was a bit of a curmudgeon, a bit of a jerk maybe at, from times, he was a very strict philosopher. He was well known for living the life he preached, 
And in fact, Athens created a statue in his honor and gave him the keys to the city. He was so well respected in the community. So unfortunately, not a lot of direct information, you know, quotes from Zeno here, but some really good ones. Um, and I will also say his best known work was called uh, The Republic, kind of, a, <laughs> I think, kind of in refutation to Plato's Republic. And apparently it was seen kind of as something that the later Stoics didn't want to talk about a lot. It was kind of a, like, oh, well, that was Zeno when he was when he was experimenting. We don't want to talk about that. But in Zeno's Republic, he talks about how the uh, – the the sage or the perfect human being would be the citizen of this perfect city. So when everyone uh, reaches this point, they would be the citizens. People who hadn't reached sagehood weren't good enough to be citizens in this perfect city. This city wouldn't have money. Um, th these people wouldn't use money for transactions. These people would... Um, would uh, men and women would dress the same and it says they would not leave any part of their body entirely covered i guess that would be luxurious to be completely clothed so you'd be uh wearing clothes that didn't completely cover you so you'd be exposed to the elements a little bit to toughen you up um also uh there would be a community of wives i guess that would mean uh no one would be married to anyone else you would kind of have a swinger state <laughs> i don't know uh don't know exactly how that would work, but that was something that other Stoics later that were a little more conservative were a bit embarrassed by. So as we'll see, there was a lot of diversity of opinions in Stoicism uh, all throughout its history, uh, but some emphasize different parts of it. Um, and what we'll see uh, is that Zeno kind of created a crude beginning of Stoicism that was then refined by laters, especially uh, Chrysippus later on. So we can see that as a Stoic, you can still enjoy yourself at a party. You just don't want to overindulge. You don't want people to think you're not living up to your own philosophy. And we can also see that it's a good idea to try to change individuals' minds rather than drag them off by force. It's far more effective to convince someone through argument and evidence, which is something we will pursue in the future. So unfortunately, not a lot of direct quotes here from Zeno. We'll get more into those Stoics where we do have direct uh, qu quotes from them here in the near future. But bear with me, I want to start at the beginning and work our way through the philosophy of Stoicism. So it's a new year, and I am going to be working on the discipline of desire, working on desiring fewer things, being happier with the things that I have, and trying to become less averse to hardship. I may end up fasting from time to time and uh, sleeping on the hardwood floor and doing things like that just to try to de-soften myself a little bit, uh, trying to hit the gym more often. Also, I'm trying to work on my mind, which is the primary focus of a Stoic. I have a few books to recommend, things that I'm going to be reading over the course of the year. One is called The Stoic's Reader, Selected Writings and Testimonia. This includes the uh, bits from the uh, Lives of the Eminent Philosophers by Diogenes Laertius that we read from today. Uh, includes bits about the Stoics. It has chapters uh, on logic, physics, and ethics. and has a lot of information then from Zeno and the other early Stoics. And then towards the end, it ties that into... Uh, Seneca and and uh, Epictetus and, and uh, Marcus Aurelius as well. So it's a good overview from those early Stoics, the ones that we don't have a lot of info from. So I recommend you check that out. Um, Stoicism and the Art of Happiness by Donald Robertson has a new edition out. I think it's well worth the price of getting the new edition because it includes the chapter on the Stoic view of death which if you uh, take the work of Socrates as gospel, Socrates says you can't really be a courageous, good person if you don't get over the fear of death. So uh, it's a good one to, to really focus on that. Another book I'm working on is uh, by A.A. A. Long. It's Epictetus, A Stoic and Socratic Guide to Life. Now, I think this one is really useful for those seriously pursuing Stoicism as a philosophy of life rather than a life hack. It compares uh, the techniques used by Socrates to those used by Seneca. 
but it also talks about what Epictetus expected from his students, um, how he taught, the, the examples he used, and gives you further insight to, into what he was talking about, things you might have missed otherwise. Um, it's it's not a terribly dense read. It, it's a little bit academic, but not too bad, and I recommend you check that one out. Another book I have that is kind of more aimed at the general public um, it's called Philosophy for Life and Other Dangerous Situations. I picked up a used copy of that on Amazon because I thought it would be good to kind of get an overview uh, of some of the other philosophies that were um, happening at the same time as Stoicism, just to see how they can mesh together and see if there's any good ideas I want to pilfer from them to add to my own life philosophy. Lastly, a book that I picked up is called Story Worthy by Matthew Dix. And nothing to do with philosophy, but about how to craft better stories, how to tell stories. I actually thought about um, creating a second podcast where I would work on storytelling uh, because I couldn't figure out a way to merge it into this podcast terribly well. But I don't know if I have the time or or have enough stories at this time to to do that. But one thing that's really cool about uh, Matthew Dick's work here is he recommends keeping a daily journal where you think about – reflect on your day and think about those little nuggets – of things that occur that would make a good story. It's a way to be mindful about your day so that you you don't forget what happened from day to day. You can look back and say, oh, that was the day when this happened. That was the day when this happened. Um, and I, I think that's, that's really quite meaningful. Now, uh, bef- lastly, before we go, I want to point out there is something new on the website I'd like you to check out. Uh, if you go to the website, www.sundaystoicpodcast.com, there's a forum now. Now, those of you who are listeners, you can go in and create an account, and then you can chat with other listeners. There's not very many people on it yet, but I'd like like that to be available for you to get on there and chat, and then I can get on there and interact with you as well. For those of you who are patrons, if you sign up, and you might shoot me a message so I don't miss the fact that a patron has signed up, I can give you access to post in a separate form that only patrons can post in. So um, something to think about there. Uh, So check that out. And for those of you who are interested in supporting the podcast, I greatly appreciate it. That's uh, sundaystoicpodcast.com. You can see information there. You can go to www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic to support the show on a monthly basis. And I'll have a few rewards uh, for those patrons that do that. And I'm always trying to think of new ways to uh, to reward patrons. Um, So check that out. I I really appreciate those of you who support the show. That really allows me to maintain my equipment and more importantly to keep paying the podcast hosts so that old shows stay on on the air, if you will, stay active and available to new listeners and the website and things like that. Um, also, if you want to give a one-time donation, you can do that at uh, PayPal using the email address sundaystoic at gmail.com. All right, this has been a fairly long episode for me. Normally, I'm a little shorter, but that's okay. Welcome back. I hope you have a great year, and um, let's uh, seize the day. Carpe diem. Thank you for listening to The Sunday Stoic. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review The Sunday Stoic on iTunes. Become a member of The Sunday Stoic team, earn rewards, and be an integral part of the show by becoming a patron at www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic. Contact the show by emailing sundaystoic at gmail.com or by leaving a voicemail at 501-503-3132. To find out more, visit www.sundaystoicpodcast.com. And as Steve always says, carpe diem. Carpe diem.